Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 145. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Can't wear blue jeans at work? Well okay then. Not very malicious. Not very compliant. But if you want to know what it is like trying to manage 20-something Silicon Valley software engineers then read on. I worked as a programmer for a small Silicon Valley financial software company of about 40 people. And we were all in one cubicle office space. Marketing. Sales, admin, support, and engineering. In Silicon Valley the dress code among technical people is extreme casual, as in you're going out of the house wearing that? And we scruffy people were kept in the back while the people who dealt with customers were up front by the entrance. And all was good, until... Bosses got the notion that engineers should look professional because clients got shown around the office, and so word came down from on high that blue jeans were not appropriate attire. Not good. Nobody wants to wear fancy duds while coding. This was about the time Levi's started to sell jeans in other colors. Blue denim wasn't the only choice. You could get gray or black. Exact same comfy jeans, just a different color. So we switched to gray slash black jeans. No more blue jeans, just as required. And that worked for a while. Then the message from management with Iral was okay, guys. No jeans of any color. And so we all ignored it and business went on. And in my time as a software engineer it wasn't the last time silly edicts from on high got ignored. But it was the only time there was any effort made at compliance. Thank you. Next. Oh. You want me to keep my lawn constantly maintained okay. Reminded of this little gem after reading this post. HTTPS. Slash slash www. Reddit com slash r slash revenge slash comments slash hlhbx9 slash neighbor didn't like how I did my own lawn slash. It seems like my family have always been cursed with awful neighbors, from threatening to kill us, to spraying me as a little kid with a hose while I was in my backyard, to killing out pets if they ever escaped. We usually just avoided them, but one particular unit was really really into maintaining his front lawn. To the point of writing us numerous semi-threatening letters if our lawn got higher than his. So my mum, in all her wisdom, complied. She would go over the whole lawn on our mower's second lowest setting. So it was bloody perfect. Then she went over it again in a random pattern on the lowest setting. It was a masterpiece. From up on the passing road, it looked totally normal. But from the front of our house, or his, you could just tell that something was off. I think the first few times he mowed over our lawn afterwards himself to fix it, but gave up on his pestering pretty quickly. Thank you. Next. Make fun of my learning disability and make me finish your project? Fine. Enjoy your F. Context. You aren't zoned for a particular public middle and high school in NYC. You have to apply, interview, test, and get in. It's a grueling competitive process, and I attended a very academically competitive middle school. Students often went on to attend specialized high schools, which they take an additional test for called the SHSATs. At age 11, I was diagnosed with ADHD, MDD, and an anxiety disorder. I received accommodations for such, of side testing, classes with two teachers, weekly counseling, and teachers were not low-key about it. In 7th grade, The class received books detailing requirements to get into every NYC public high school. During homeroom, everyone was chatting about their dream schools. Kid sitting across from me, let's call him A, asked me what my first choice was. I told him it was art and design high school, and he started laughing hysterically. I asked A what was so funny, and he pointed to the math requirement. You needed a 91% in math to get in. I was already crushed, but A continued. Saying her the math teacher and I talking about my 61% a week ago, the kid sitting adjacent from me, B, erupted into laughter as I ran out of class in a fit of anger. The next week, A, B, and I were placed in a group project for English. At first they were underwhelmed, but when the teacher, Ms. K, handed out our trimester progress reports and they saw my whopping 105%, I got an A on most every assignment. Did extra credit I didn't have to, they were delighted. Each of us were responsible for working on a portion of the Google Doc, which means K would be checking to make sure we did our part. I finished my portion in a single class period, 
While A and B struggled to get past their first questions, that's when A spoke up and said OP, since you're not studying for the SHSATs like us, why don't you do our parts? B agreed, but then said IDKA, she is a wattard, so don't expect a good grade. I grinned and pulled out my progress report, okay, tell that to my 105%. Each of them offered me $10 which I gladly accepted, and told them to hand over their email passwords so I could log into the doc as them. I did a horrible job on their portions of the project, and asked them to proofread it. They said no, because they were far too busy with the SHSATs. A and B were stunned when they each received a 50%. This counted for 20% of our final trimester grade, bringing them down from an A to a B. They complained to Ms. K that I sabotaged their projects, so she pulled up the timestamps of them working on the project and scolded them for blaming me. When A and B asked how I got a 96% and they got a 50%, even though I did all their work, I smirked and said, I don't know. After all, I am a wartard. Their faces went white, looking absolutely defeated. Thank you. Next. Do you want to teach this class? Okay. Back in middle school, we had a teacher, we'll call him Mr. Teacher, who was kind of a jerk. He was kind of an odd guy who came off as very condescending to students. He also seemed kind of disinterested in teaching in general. One day, during math class, he's generally butchering a lesson on the basics of algebra, literally the introduction to how an equation is formed and balanced. One kid is really struggling and asking a lot of questions. Mr. Teacher is struggling to come up with a coherent explanation. Finally, the class clown, we'll call him kid, who was actually pretty smart, couldn't handle it anymore and interjects. Kid, Mr. Teacher you're explaining this in a really confusing way, it's not as complicated as you're making it out to be. Mr. Teacher, look, do you want to teach this class? Kid, sure. I bet I can explain it better than you are right now. Mr. Teacher, I'd like to see that. Go right ahead. Now, the tone of this wasn't friendly. Mr. Teacher was trying to put Kid in his place and he was really sarcastic about the whole thing. You could tell he thought Kid was going to bomb and be embarrassed. Well, Kid marches up to the whiteboard, grabs a marker, and spends 5 minutes walking the struggling Kid through the lesson, in front of the entire class. His explanation is clear, it makes sense, and at the end the struggling Kid goes oh okay. Now I finally get it. Thanks. Mr. Teacher is pretty sour about this turn of events and picks up on a small detail. Detail X. The kid omitted from his explanation. He says, Mr. Teacher, you know kid, you didn't mention anything about, detail X. Kid turns around and looks dead in Mr. Teacher's eyes and says, Kid, Mr. Teacher, do you want to teach this class? The class erupts in laughter and clapping and Mr. Teacher looks like he wants to kill kid. Meanwhile it was legit like a movie and the bell rings and class ended. Edit. Fixed acronyms into proper pseudonyms edit too fixed some brackets. Thank you. Next. Lesson learned about productivity. Not sure if this is the right place, but I think so. If not, please point me in the right direction. So I was working for a small mom and pop health food store. Full staff including owner probably only 15. I was hired to do data entry type work. First day and I'm seated next to the only two other people doing this job. We take the online orders and re-enter all the data from customer info to product purchases, into another program, possibly QuickBooks. I'm given a very small batch of papers to rekey into the other program. The other two people are typing slowly, I mean almost excruciatingly slowly. The manager is in another room so he's not watching us work. Being eager to do a great job I fly through my stack of papers in about 2 hours out of my 8 hour day. I proudly walk into the manager's room and ask for more data to key. He tells me that was my work for the entire day. He tells me I can leave for the day and that I would be getting paid for only the time I worked. Now I got it. Now I realized why the other two worked at the pace they did. I was never told to go home early after that although it pained me to type so slowly and work so far below my potential. Thank you. Next. You want a baby monitor on at all time? You got it. Backstory. For the past 3 days my fiancé has been preparing himself to switch to graveyards, he alternates 4 days on slash 4 days off with afternoon shifts and graveyard shifts. 
We have a six mo old son. When the baby wakes up in the morning, I turn one of the baby monitors we have off and I take the other one downstairs with me so I don't have to come back for it and so it doesn't disturb him when he's trying to sleep. This all happened yesterday. I left the second monitor downstairs accidentally for the baby's afternoon nap and forgot to turn on the first one while I was pumping. My fiancé wakes up around this time and is playing on his computer. I realize it's pretty silent so I asked him if he had the baby monitor with him. He gets all snarky saying Naru I just woke up. Why would I have it? He huffs his way to the one we have upstairs and turns it on to realize it's also muted. He goes off on this little rant saying that it should always be on with full volume so this situation doesn't happen again. I just nod and say, yes honey knowing today will be his first graveyard shift. My fiancé usually gets home around 7am and instantly goes to bed. That's also just before the baby wakes up. He's a very happy baby and just wakes up talking slash cooing so he's not very noisy to begin with. I walk in and go, hi baby good morning. Did you have a good sleep? And change his diaper the loudest I possibly could all while talking very loudly to him about our plans for today. It's not a very exciting ending but it satisfied the petty side of me this afternoon when he came into the kitchen. He didn't look me in the eye when he told me that we don't really need the baby monitor on upstairs all the time. Thank you. Next. Patient learns karma is a bitch. So, I gotta start by saying I'm a nurse. And considering the difficult position and vulnerability most people in a hospital are living, I try to make my patient's life as easy as I can. This is maybe the only time I really felt I was being a mean nurse, and did it anyway. I worked at an orthopedic service at the time, and the patient in question had had surgery about 5 days ago, for a hip replacement. So, this one day, I'm giving medication to patients, and this particular patient is in the corridor, and I hand him acetaminophen pills, pain medication, not strong at all, but tastes as bitter as they come, and you need to swallow them fast, or they dissolve in your mouth and the flavor is just the worst. He's in no pain, it was a preventive measure at the time. He takes the pills out of the wrapper and throws it in the floor right in front of me, trash can by his side. Dot. Me sir, you just threw garbage to the floor. Patient, yeah, so, be well, if you didn't want to put it in the trash can, you could just have given it to me, and I would do it. Patient don't sweat it, the maid will get it. And he proceeds to put the pills in his mouth and rolls his wheelchair to his bedroom to get the water. I'm really pissed at this point. I'm not going to let litter stay on in hospital floor, so I pick it up and count to ten. Meanwhile, he gets to his hospital table. That is his one, 5L water bottle on top. That particular table is not very stable, and it just happens that his wheelchair bumps into it before he can reach the bottle, and the bottle falls to the other side of the table. He can't pass the wheelchair to the other side of the table, and so he is at this point with the pills in his mouth with no way of getting his water. I realize it, and I'm in no hurry to help. I enter the room to administer medication to another patient that's in his bed. Three other patients in that bedroom. Patient nurse. My water bottle fell to the ground and. Me. Not letting him finish the sentence. Oh. Don't worry. The maid will pick it up and throw it out. And I then quickly proceed to the next patient. Same goes as I'll leave the room. And again as I enter again for the third patient. Patient is by now fuming. His saliva melting the pills. That horrible tastes in his mouth for a while. As I'm leaving for good he tries again to say the full sentence, and this time I'll let him, it wasn't easy, cause he had this paste of melting pills in his mouth. Patient nurse. I let my water bottle fall, and I need it to take my pills. Me I'm so sorry, though you just wanted to throw something out again. I'm so sorry, here you go. And I left, feeling justice had been made.